go ahead to be able to talk about uh, CP violation time state interaction. Okay, good morning. So I'm very pleased uh, to be part of, 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 of the workshop. And I will talk a little bit in another direction, that is uh, the works we have been doing on CPD uh, in heavy meson decays and uh, final state interactions. My collaborators are Bediaga, Torres Machado, and Patricia. So now the, the big point uh, that we, we address now is the... Uh, I don't know if my screen is clear to you or not. Uh, it is perfect, uh, we can see it. Is, it is about uh, the uh, CP asymmetry that uh, people measure, LSCD measure, in the DDK, in the two channels. So K, K minus, K plus, and pi minus, pi plus. So this number is already about one hour, one order of magnitude larger than uh, what people have been expected. So there is a lot of speculation about new physics to explain this order of magnitude. Understanding this uh, asymmetry is also important to go beyond that and to look to, to three body decays. And there will be search in many process at LACB, BES, BEL, and eventually uh, can lead to new physics, like, uh, I mean, process that are double cabibo suppressor. So it's fundamental to understand uh, if we can still uh, understand this uh, uh, quantity using standard model physics. So let me say some words on CP violation. And uh, the condition for CP violation is that you have two uh, amplitudes that interfere. One, I mean, carrying the strong and weak phases. So you need both. The weak phases will, will, be, will change sign when you go to the antiparticle. And uh, this causes the asymmetry you see, in, for example, in the weed, partial weeds of, of some process in, in, in a given channel. So the strong phase, the weak phase, of course, comes from CKM, and the strong phase should come from QCD. Uh, at, at the quark level, the strong phase is, uh, comes from the interference between the three and a penguin diagram that carries the strong phase. Here is the gluon. So this is, was good to explain uh, B-meson decaying in, into two hadrons. Uh, here, for example, in two mesons. But also uh, particles in the final state can interact. And there will be, uh, according to Watson theorem, there will be strong phases. So we should in some way take this into account. So now uh, let us uh, just say a little bit, just to point the efforts in, uh, in the understanding the CP violation in B D0. Uh, so essentially you have the dominance of the three diagrams and this one carrying the weak phase, while this one, the weak phase is much smaller, about 20 times smaller. So there is QCD factorization efforts, light on some rules, but what they have been doing give you one order of magnitude below. And there are other approaches like topological approaches with SU3 constraint without uh, uh, breaking SU3 with final state interaction, but all those approaches involves 
some fitting procedure. So there is a recent uh, work uh, with resonances are uh, close to the uh, D0 that could mix uh, the pi pi and kk state. And this could also eventually lead to, to, the, to the magnitude of the asymmetry. Uh, but altogether, this summarized in this nice review by Lenz and Wilkinson, that says that we, we are still in an unfortunate situation, you know, where um, uh, we are not still, we have approaches that are able to, to, to be in agreement with the standard model, you no, know, that that suggests that the standard model is in agreement with data, but there is some extent of fitting. Uh, while uh, QCD, some rules, for example, is not able to, to, to get this number. Uh, so they say that it's really a challenge to, uh, to find, you know, uh, to deeper our understanding on, on this CP violation in the shark sector. So we have been working uh, with the B-Meson for uh, quite some time, and we saw there that is uh, quite important. We can really pin down the effect of final state interaction, in particular, uh, the coupling between the pi pi and kk. And that is evident. So we apply the same idea in this archive, and we really saw an enhancement. So I will try to give you the hints on how we go to that. So here is the integrated yields for B going to three counts, K pi pi, K K pi, and pi pi pi. So this is a quite busy transparency. But you see here, for example, if you look in this case, K on three K ohms and K pi pi, you see here the CP violation that is the difference between <clears throat> so the, these two yields, they have the, exactly in this region between one and 1 1.5 GV of the count of the pair of counts and pair of piles, they have opposite sides. And the same happens for KK pi and three piles. So if you have um, a coupling as we had, we know from scattering, strong coupling between the, the two pions and uh, two kaons or KK bar, then of course, uh, CP violation can flow from one channel to the other one. And also we can see some interesting features that when we change the counts by pions, we have uh, opposite signs. This was already understood in global CP violation by uh, Batasharaya, Grono, and Rosner. Uh, so we made some effort, I mean, it was published this year, that we tried to put together final state interaction, CPT that I mentioned, and UE spin in this case. So, uh, Final state interactions, as I mentioned, uh, carries uh, strong phases. This was indeed an old idea by Wolfstein for about 30 years old now, that we, the first time we made an application in 2014 to try to understand exactly the, uh, this uh, CP violation in BDK. So just to remind you, CPT invariance just says that the lifetime of the particle and antiparticles are identical. But we know that the total width is the sum of all the widths. So if there is a, a CP violation in one width, should be compensated by the others. But CPT only is able to relate channels with the same quantum numbers, and then they are coupled by, by the strong interaction. And uh, indeed, that in that region between 1 and 1.6 GV, there is a strong coupling between pi pi and kk, which can explain the pattern 
of the CPV in, in these uh, channels, where H is a pile or a cave. So just to let to, for you to see what is the phase shift and absorption parameter <clears throat> in this mass region of between one and 1.5. So we have here, I mean, this is the threshold of, of KK bar. And then uh, this is uh, the elastic uh, phase shift in the pi pi channel, isospin zero, S wave. And this is the inelast inelasticity parameter. And then you see a strong drop. So this is the opening of the KK channel. And then uh, you have a lot of absorption from the pion channel to the K on channel. And then it drops. Um, and the pattern you see when you build up, <clears throat> sorry, uh, the, uh, the asymmetry, I mean, the difference between the widths in the two channels, they are more or less uh, one minus the other. So that means when I sum up, I have zero. So CP uh, violation flow, I mean, uh, going from one channel to another one that are strong coupled. And indeed, if you just write down, just thinking in the Watson theorem, here just for you to take a look. So this is the uh, transition, uh, transition amplitude. And here, if I factorize this term, I have the S matrix for two channels. And this is essentially the, the Watson theorem. So if you play with this simple expression, just with the two channels, <clears throat> you arrive to this kind of expression where you have, of course, here is the amount absorbed by from the pi pi channel to the KK channel. And uh, here are the phase shifts. And this is some phase that of course, these numbers can be complex, sorry. <clears throat> and indeed, uh, this uh, ingredient uh, that you have the cup, I mean, the final state interaction from pi pi to kk was confirmed in a very uh, detailed amplitude analysis quite recently by the LACB. <clears throat> so now uh, we, we just recently, we applied this idea to look at the global CPV in BDKs. And these are the difference in the partial widths for this channel. And really we see the jumping of sign, you can see. And people have found that the source for the global CP asymmetry is essentially concentrated in that region uh, where you have the pi pi to kk scattering. And uh, what say you spin symmetry it says that uh, the, the global uh, the width, uh, the global, I mean, uh, asymmetry in the width of this channel is equal to this channel as well, minus with minus sign and this channel and this channel. So you just exchange pi pions uh, to chaos. And this at the time is, uh, we got, I mean, the data from the PDG 2020. So the, 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 the sign was okay with, with you prediction from U spin that predicts these relations. Uh, the magnitude I saw recently that uh, were, is very close to one in the new, new experiments. And uh, so how do you build this? Uh, I mean, when, how do you put together final state interaction and uh, U-spin uh, uh, symmetry. So this is the idea is based on the paper of, of that I mentioned by Hosner and collaborators. So we have here the, the CKA matrix for, for this process and, and the CKA matrix for this process. And then we have some operator 
that make the decay. So this is a strong operator from B to the final state. And this final state contains, of course, the, uh, the distortion due to the rescattering. So if you, if you use these, these expressions and uh, just some, I mean, you can build the asymmetry in the weeds. And then here you have uh, the imaginary part of the product of this CKA matrix that if you exchange Q, that is uh, D to S, namely changing a pion to a kion, this imaginary part uh, due to the unitarity of the CKM matrix change side. And this was the point by, by Hosmer. And uh, here you see the, when you work out uh, this uh, expression, essentially following uh, uh, the paper by Wolfstein, you have the S matrix for the channel. And uh, when you sum up over all the, the final state channels, do it to the unitarity of the S matrix, essentially you sum uh, uh, the difference in the width to zero. Okay, so now we can make a little application of this model, just considering a two channel uh, uh, coupling, pi pi and kk. Uh, here uh, is just the expression. You have five minutes, okay? Sorry. Oh, <laughs> the, yes. the, the time flight. <laughs> Okay, so uh, essentially we are able to incorporate both, uh, both uh, final state interaction and the USP. So let me, and these are the predictions we can have that is really not bad. So these are the channels coupled by uh, final state interaction. Okay, so let us go back to the single Kabibo suppress uh, D0 decays. And the idea is that uh, this uh, uh, tree diagram has the weak phase, while this one, the weak phase is about 20 times smaller. So we, we can consider only the weak phase in this diagram. And this is the process. So we can have pions and then kaons or a direct scatter. So we will have uh, an interference. Okay, so the S matrix. I mean, that enters according to the Watson theorem in the, in the decay amplitude, can couple two meson states, three meson states, and so on. And uh, we, we have, I mean, uh, there is, I mean, uh, by G parity, so we cannot couple uh, two pions to three pions, even two pions to four pions are also suppressed by. Uh, counting rules of uh, color counting rules and eta eta channel also couple much weaker than uh, to K, than kk bar okay so our model is similar to what i have seen so this is the s matrix so this is d naught kk so this is the the diagonal part of the two channel s matrix and this is the off diagonal and then the same for KK and pi pi. So you can easily compute the, the width difference, and then you arrive uh, to this expression. And then you see amplitudes. So those amplitudes that we say does not carry phases, then the inelasticity parameter and phi, cosine phi is the difference between KK and pi pi. Immediately you could say by USP symmetry, maybe this difference is pretty small. Okay, but we also do not know these quantities, but we can estimate these quantities by the uh, branching fraction. Like, uh, and then we should be able, I mean, relying on data for phi and in elasticity predict. So this is our expression, so here, is the CKM uh, matrix element. This is the inelasticity and cosine phi and the branching ratios that we know. And the, this simple model, we have, of course, this CPT relation. Okay, so these are the phase shifts. 
for pi pi scattering, and this is the inelasticity. So it's a crazy thing. But anyway, there is one data point that gives give us inelasticity of 0.78 by Graia. And this is, was a direct uh, observation of the pi pi, pi to kk scattering. And then uh, this is give you the modulus essentially uh, of, of, of the S matrix, of the off diagonal S matrix. And here we have access to the uh, sum of the phases. And if you use this uh, uh, observation here, we have an eta that is not as small as the, the other one because the other one may have more channels but it's still different uh, from one. Okay, and what about the, the phase? Indeed, if we collect the data, I mean, in this region, we see that cosine phi is almost one. And if we take, uh, uh, unfortunately do not have at 1.8 GV mass. Okay, but we took from this, uh, uh, analysis from Pelais, Rodas, and uh, Elvira. Okay, so our final results, when we put all together, we know that, we know that, we know that cosine phi is about one. Okay, so we can make a prediction, and indeed, when we put apart the inelasticity parameter, we have already the or correct order of magnitude for delta Cp. So now the big question, what about this? And then uh, the two values that we, if we use the two values, indeed we have something that the uh, CP asymmetry is, I mean, the difference is really in between. Okay, so uh, with that, I, I can, uh, I, I think I showed my main points and I just left to you my summary and uh, thank you. Thanks, Tobias, um, for the talk. Do we have questions, comments? Yes, uh, uh, Christoph, please. Thank you very much for the nice talk. It's just a very quick one. When you were talking about the BD case, you looked at final states like pi kk, but only mentioned pi pi kk a couple channels. Is there any estimate of the role of the pi k interaction? Um, in the past, we look at to the d to the three uh, to as far as far as I remember was k pi pi, no, but the pions with the same uh, charge. Uh, we have not taken into account in the three body case uh, that. Uh, for the BDK, we, we look at that in the past in the DDK. So you, you can really see, I mean, the contribution for uh, K pi uh, 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 scattering. But for the B, we don't have, uh, I mean, uh, we, we relied essentially on that observation that the, what remains from the CP violation is uh, real is in that low mass region. When you look to the Dalitz plot, more or less it is compensated. The CP, uh, uh, I mean, the CP violation between the two couple channels by pi pi and kk. So uh, probably of course the scattering can happen, but it will uh, compensate within the, the Dalitz, allowed Dalitz region, at least this is what we understand so far, no? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Thank you. So, Alexei, please. <clears throat> yes, I have uh, two questions. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes okay. Alexei. So the first question, uh, I mean, you have this picture uh, nicely uh, over there on, uh, uh, on the transparency. So this, uh, the, the strength of a contribution to say K plus K minus channel really depends on a weak transition between a D naught and uh, well, in your case, pi plus pi minus channel. So if I am to stay, and it's not just determined by the CKM factor, it's also <clears throat> determined by hadronic dynamics. 
So for instance, uh, if I look at uh, a channel where D0 goes to say rho plus rho minus, um, uh, that channel uh, might have a larger branching ratio and therefore a larger weak amplitude that uh, would weight your rescattering uh, to even uh, you know, greater uh, contribution or smaller if it is, uh, if it is negative. Uh, second point uh, is that, well, you sort of dismiss the, the, the four body channels. But uh, uh, again, uh, under the same um, uh, under the same uh, logic, so if you have a d naught to pi plus pi minus pi naught pi naught contribution, even though uh, uh, the scattering of this four uh, four pi intermediate state to k plus k minus might be suppressed, uh, uh, the uh, the decay uh, d naught to to four pi ns is actually a percent, so it's two orders of magnitude larger than anything that you're considering here. So uh, my point is that uh, uh, it is actually before this uh, statement that the standard model is enough and new physics has to wait uh, uh, is made, uh, probably uh, other channels would also need to be considered. Um, yes, of course. So I understand that. And you can see by the difference here. So by these uh, phases, no? by these uh, inelasticity parameters. Of course, uh, there is a, a large error here. Here is a smaller error, but in this uh, paper, I mean, the experimental data, people mentioned that uh, they were not taking into account uh, the systematic uh, errors. So maybe this could be, you see, if we could, have a better uh, uh, observations for the inelasticity parameter, we could uh, be more assertive on that. Of course, if they were identical, we, we yeah. could, uh, all on this, uh, uh, I mean, experimental side, disregard. But there is yeah. room, I mean, and you see that uh, is about, a, you see, a factor of three when we consider this inelasticity. But the point was to get uh, the, the book of the number. Of course, uh, we should do, th this model is quite simple, but uh, it gives the, the magnitude, no? And, no, but um, uh, that, that's not what I'm talking about. So the in inelasticity is a parameter of your final state interaction scare rescattering. What I'm saying is that for each rescattering channel, there is a, there is a weak process that feeds that channel. And if that weak channel is, uh, uh, has larger uh, amplitude, it actually skews your scattering picture. You know, even to the point that you need to take into account four body intermediate states, even though they are suppressed in large, uh, large and C. I would be glad to talk to you about that. Uh, oh, I okay. don't want to take okay. a look. Yeah, I, I think we should my, my second short question is that, yes. where is this conclusion that the uh, new physics has to wait uh, comes from? I mean, you keep saying that this is a simple model and, uh, you know, there are other contributions possible. So why, why are you saying that? Uh, it's, it's just because we are able to get uh, the correct magnitude. So but what's the guarantee cannot... that other so, channels would uh, sorry, not bring it down? Sorry, uh, guys, this is very, very interesting. I love this discussion. It's also like my work, but I think we, we also have to allow uh, other people to make questions. So if okay. you want briefly to comment, Tobias, and then I will pass the words to you. Yeah, I mean, uh, our understanding of why standard model uh, has still to, to wait is just because of the, I mean, new physics, because um, of the enhancement of this quantity that we find by final state interaction. I think there is no doubt on that. And that this is the main point, of course, that people have to think about this big enhancement that is already appeared in the work uh, of our colleagues when they look to the resonance contribution. So I think this is the key point, enhancement. Okay, and Lohio, please. Yes, I mean, uh, Tobias, I mean, I, Oi. Uh, you, I know, I know you, you are really pioneer on this, I mean, a uh, uh, strong interaction, I mean, the high state interaction in this uh, CP parity violation. Uh, and uh, and I follow, I mean, your work a little bit. And now, I mean, uh, the thing is that 
uh, for example, you mentioned there the, the eta eta going to Kekibar is not as strong as pi pi, pi going yeah. to Kekibar. This I support, but you know it costs nothing. I mean to include all the channels that we see. I mean, uh, I our group has worked very much on this, as you know, on on big yes, case. I know. And then we concentrate on the things that we know how to do, which is just the final state interaction, including, for example, three particles in the final state and that connects with the question, I mean, of a, of a hand heart. Alexei. Yeah, no, yeah. no, hand heart. Well, we okay. utilize in all the couples. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. for example, pi k, we also take into account, k, k bar, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, for example, I mean, uh, uh, it would cost you nothing. I mean, uh, to go, I mean, start, I mean, from the, in the weak decay, I mean, at the quark level, then hadronize, I mean, to put their pairs of mesons. And then, I mean, there are the mesons, I mean, interact, but all the pairs, I mean, you should, I mean, take into account all the pairs. And, uh, and I suggest then, I mean, to use a unitary approach. I mean, for example, in your case, the chiral unitary approach would be, I mean, a very, very suitable, uh, because then you unitarize in all the couple channels that you have. And then, I mean, you are talking precisely about the, the strong phases, right? Phases from sound interaction. But then, I mean, for that, a unitary scheme is important in order to get the phases right. So that's why I would suggest, I mean, they are, I mean, to implement them, the unitarity, the interaction, the final state interaction using a unitary scheme, I mean, in couple channels, because that's what we guarantee that the phases are correct. And it doesn't cost much more than uh, what you are doing. It, 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 it takes about the same time. Yes, uh, I mean, uh, if we have the S matrix, of course, it's not a huge uh, effort. The only point is to find out if we have the branching ratios to get uh, those amplitudes. This is what we need, you know? The, everything else, I mean, if you know all that and uh, you need to find uh, these, uh, let us say, uh, amplitudes, you no? Know? that do not carry the phases. And this comes from the branching ratio. So if you have all this information, and then uh, probably you can build. It's just lengthy mm. and okay. formula. It's fine. Okay, okay sorry. Uh, we really thank thanks a lot, Tobias, and everybody that makes the questions. Uh, I will, we really late, so sorry. Uh, now, in principle, we should take a picture. So uh, before going to the break, 